Here it is. I have it. The freaking 5090. This thing is really heavy, by the way. I'm able to unbox it and kind of give my thoughts about it. I've also tried it which means I have some thoughts how it feels, how it performs, even on DLSS multi-frame generation. But I can't show you anything yet due to the embargo and that kind of stuff. One of the big things, because this card is so freaking massive and it's so goddamn efficient too, of how it displaces the heat, 600 watts. It's like this. It's like a freaking hair dryer. You put your hand over, it's crazy how hot it is. It is a literal space heater. Let's go ahead and switch down to the top down camera you look out of here so this card is still freaking massive like here's it compared to some smaller cards like against a 4070 at the same time though this is like almost 600 watts and it still can cool it properly the fans are huge these have to be like full-size case fans at this point absolutely massive the power cable or the power port here it kind of goes out diagonally which makes it a lot easier to manage We'll talk about that in just a second. There's giant flow through cooling. This cooler's really interesting because they have the PCB in the middle and they're using extensions to get to the PCIe slot and to the display connectors on the side. And what's weird is there's no like vents on the display connectors here. They're just kind of there because it is so efficient and it pushes so much air like through the top of it, it just flows right through the top it does push a lot of heat onto your cpu too especially if you're using an air cooler so i'd probably recommend using a liquid cooler with this uh, graphics card specifically this model if that's what you're planning on getting also if you're wondering because of the extensions for this you might think that these display connectors wouldn't be as strong or anything but they're just as strong as you think they would be same with the pcie slot thing is solid they probably put a lot of work on to just trying to get this thing to be as strong as it is it looks nice feels good super heavy 1800 grams compared to the 4080 super which is basically the same thing as the 4090 it's like 2100 grams if you compare it to 7900 xtx from amd it's like 1900 grams at least that model of the card i'm um, much heavier than like a 4070 at like a thousand grams the arc b580 which came out recently it was like 780 ish grams feels good although there's some weirdness like it, it kind of and you can't really see it but you might be able to hear it can you see like it flex a little bit like you can press on the heat sink you can't hear it. It doesn't make a sound. There's like a little bit of flex to it. So I'm not even sure if these, this, these like trim pieces are even attached to the middle one. This is just the Founders Edition card and there'll be tons of other models that will be available. Probably most people won't be getting the Founders Edition card anyways. And the new power connector is interesting. It's like such as like this really long, very like floppy connector compared to the old one. This is basically the one that was on the RTX 4090 is technically the 4080 super one you can see how much more stiff it is and how small it is for the connection it just doesn't give you that much flexibility and you guys know that a lot of these things were freaking burning up on it so nvidia changed that power connector to be on the side and kind of sticking out like this and now you can just you know plug in this to the edge and that kind of flops around i think it'd be a lot easier to manage these cables for this guy even though four freaking eight pin connectors to the end of it is still hella crazy this is the old connector, how it plug into the 5090 here. I mean, this isn't terrible, but you can tell why it would be longer because it, you're probably going to route your cables going around the GPU, right? But this one is too short to even reach that. It can't reach the end. I've really not liked the new power connectors that much up to this point, but if they do get like much easier to plug in with this there's less reliability problems and you're not gonna have issues melting you know with the 5090 the power is even higher i think this maybe could be a nice thing in the future especially if we're getting cards that draw more power having one connector to plug in can be pretty nice but i also love my 8 pin connector too i also did find it neat the box is odd for this graphics card now it's all apparently just cardboard and some adhesives there's no plastic in it i'm assuming that's because everything can just be recycled which makes a lot of sense because their last generation with their rtx 40 series like founder edition cards they were extremely like thick boxes and they were huge extremely inefficient to ship i could definitely tell that there's a reason a lot of other manufacturers don't use as big of boxes what nvidia was doing i wonder how this will look in stores uh, that's actually the big question because these are available in best buy typically let's go ahead and dig into the performance of it 
because I can't show you any performance, but we can talk about what we've seen so far. Obviously, I made a video recently about how NVIDIA revealed some more performance numbers on their website, which does give them more of an idea of how it is going to perform in rasterized games. Rasterization is what's going to usually make your frame rate go higher until games are like all ray traced or something like that, which is still quite a while off. I've compiled all the specs and stuff, and you can see here that the 4090 versus 5090, there's about 33% more CUDA cores, 33% more ray tracing cores, like almost like two and a half times more AI performance here. And the boost clock actually goes down, which is interesting. And then the memory bandwidth goes crazy because it's going from a 384 bit bus to a 512 bit bus. And that means it goes up from 24 gigs to 32 gigabytes of memory. My entire PC has 32 gigabytes of memory. And so that's just on this graphics card. It's crazy actually because of that and it being on gdr7 it has some massive bandwidth like 78 percent more memory bandwidth crazy but the thing is that doesn't always translate to some crazy performance because based on what we're seeing it's only going to be about 33 percent faster in rasterized titles this is a an average between the horizon forbidden west and the resident evil 4 data that we see right here they also show far cry 6 this is with ray tracing. I don't know how heavy our Far Cry 6 is. I don't actually have that game, but they're saying it's 28% faster in that title. Plague Tale Requiem, 43% faster in that title. It seems like Nvidia wants to highlight more the ray tracing performance because the rasterization, it's like, oh, you get 33% more CUDA cores that we've seen up here. That affects your rasterization performance quite a bit. But this memory bandwidth doesn't even seem to be a huge like seller, I guess, for the card. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. In certain titles where memory is a huge limiter, maybe it'll get a ton more performance. Performance. We just show a quick comparison here against the RTX 3090 on tech power up. So the 3090 to the 4090 was insane. And that's why so many people were so hyped about the 4090 because it was freaking 64. Do you see this? 64% faster overall compared to the 3090. This would be more like going from 3090 to a 4080. I know a lot of people are just going to be looking at these cards and they always want to buy the best. They already have a 4090. They're going to get a 5090. That's just how it's going to be for a lot of people. Come on, let's be honest. That's how it works. So there'll be people that do that. But overall, the uplift isn't that crazy. And that does kind of, you know, apply to a lot of the other graphics cards in the stack. I can't show you anything, but I have played a few games on the 5090. I haven't gone through my whole suite of tests yet, which is kind of upsetting because uh, the freaking embargo is up on the 23rd. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm hoping I can get this this stuff this stuff done i've just been very 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 busy my my grandma has been sick too and now i've never actually had a 4090 what's interesting is i will be getting one i looked on facebook marketplace and there's actually some decent deals as people are trying to get rid of their 4090s so they can buy 5090s but i never experienced performance that was as crazy as what the 4090 could offer but i threw it into my system and i was like oh shit this is pretty this is pretty fast dude it is pretty fast like i can play 4k very very well dlss multi-frame generation i can't show you it but i have experience and you guys know that i've been very 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 critical of this this is what nvidia has been advertising their cards on the rtx 5080 here i mean most of the performance is coming from that multi-frame generation and here at the 5090 also coming from a lot with that multi-frame generation. But it does feel quite smooth. It plays quite smooth. But you have to have a good starting FPS to use it. It's not really that much different than the conversation that was involving frame generation before. And in fact, this one is even probably more of a niche use case compared to the original 2X frame generation because you need that high refresh rate monitor. Now with the 5090, it could be pretty normal. It's like, oh, you probably have a very high refresh rate monitor. You're spending $2,000 on a graphics card anyways however though what gets me worried is how this is going to scale on the lower end gpus because if you can't achieve that nice base rate frame rate for that nice latency the feeling the game feel in the game because frame generation doesn't improve your latency at all it just makes it look smoother then how do those cards stack up as we get on the price stack the 5090 probably fine probably fine but and what about the other ones well, there's some thoughts on it. The 5090 itself is freaking crazy. It costs $2,000. Most 4090s are sold out right now. I type in a 4090 sorted by lowest price. I mean, the lowest price cards are like $2,500 right now, more because they're sold out, but yeah, they've been going for this price for so long because there's no competition in this high end price bracket. So the 5090, honestly, I would expect, you know, coming to launch here, I think they're going to be more expensive than that. I don't think they're going to be $2,000. I, th I think we'd be expecting like $2,500 most of the time. We've also seen from some leaks that the supply of these cards isn't going to be that impressive and it might get scalped quite a bit at the beginning. 
And we don't even know if there'll be like a major restock. Is this in like something that's gonna be normal for Nvidia here? I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if the 5090 will ever be available in large quantities. This could be a specific strategy from Nvidia. We're not sure at this point. So if you do wanna get one, you're gonna have to be pretty freaking quick. That's about it for this video. I can't show you a whole ton, but I can definitely give you some thoughts. I'm probably gonna be, because I don't really have a 4090, I am getting one, but I won't probably have that one as well tested yet. I'm probably on day one not going to be able to make a crazy review. We're going to have to see how the prices end up on these cards too. But I'd like to do some fun testing with this card. Having the fastest graphics card available is pretty crazy and you can do a lot with it. So I'd like to mess around with multi-frame generation, some different titles, maybe even do some CPU scaling testing to see if you buy this card, what resolution, what what freaking CPU can you get away with with this specific card. We will check that out pretty soon. Y'all have a good one. I'm going to see it in the next video probably about this graphics card. I don't think I'm going to have time to make a different one up to this point. So all right, I'm going to see you guys. Y'all have a good one and peace. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put this thing back in the system because I'll be messing with it later. <laughs>